All right, folks. Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, identify functional groups. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, two different handouts today. And if you're wondering uh, where I got these handouts from, I'll show you on my website in the chemistry section. Uh, notice I'm at wiltwithigh.com forward slash jcantrail forward slash chemistry.html. Anyway, this is uh, one of the last topics in Unit 4. And the two handouts that we're going to be looking at is handout 7 and handout 8. Okay. Now, both handouts will show you what uh, functional groups that you have uh, to memorize. Um, for my high school students, unless they're in an honors class, I do not have them to memorize it. If it's the general class, I usually let them use their sheet. Honors class, no. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's just go over some things really quickly about what these things are, maybe some helpful ways to identify them. Okay. An alkane, basically everything has all single bonds. An alkene is basically you have one when you have a double bond. An alkyne is when you have a triple bond. An alcohol has a hydroxyl group, this OH that you see here. Uh, this R is to represent any carbon chain. Now thiol, uh, notice that anytime you see thio, T-H-I-O, that is always going to be some type of sulfur. So what you need to remember is uh, with thiol is just basically if you see a sulfur, uh, SH, but I want you to be leery, uh, just basically this, if you see sulfur, I'm actually call it a thiol. Now, uh, ether, I love ethers because ethers and esters are probably the two best to memorize. Now, let me show you why. Uh, an ether is basically surrounded by two uh, separate carbon chains. Let's remember, that's what R stands for. Notice here you have uh, this carbon that's attached to this uh, oxygen. This carbon is also attached to the same oxygen. So basically, you have basically carbon chains on the left and the right, and it's only it only has one O. So ether one O, you know, ether O, ether, you know, ether O either O. Uh, here, uh, let's go down here and look at ester. Notice that these are the only two functional groups that you see that has the letter E in it. So basically the way that I remember, forced myself to remember this, was basically this E has an S. So I think of an ester as being plural, meaning more than one. Now let me tell you why, why I'm saying more than one. Notice that this and this is an O. It's got two O's. Two O's. So I just remember that an ester has two O's. Now the reason why I emphasize that is this. Uh, you still have the carbon chains on the left and on the right. Okay. Now here's your two O's. But what you got to remember is that one of these O's, this one right here, is double bonded. This other O is not double bonded. So can you see the similarities between uh, an ether and an ester? Both have an O in common, meaning they, they have O's. But this one only has one O, this ether does. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's the way that I always remembered ether and ester. Ester is the plural, meaning more than one oxygen. Ether is just one oxygen. Anyway, let's look at a mean. Now, I love amines and I love amids. Now let me tell you why. Uh, amines and amids I always think of as nitrogen. You know, ammonia. Amine, amid. Amon, A-M. Ammonia has that. So we know that ammonia is NH3. Well, notice here for amine um, that it has the word mine in the word amine. Now notice here that you have a nitrogen. This nitrogen is basically, if you want to look at it, is staking a claim on its carbon chain saying it is mine. All mine. Okay. Now I want you to also realize this. This NH2 that you see here, uh, it can be N, just N. Okay. And it could be NH or it could be NH2. So basically what you need to really focus on is basically the nitrogen. Notice that this nitrogen is staking a claim on the carbon chain and saying it's all mine. So that's the way that I remember an amine is one nitrogen. 
okay? And it's okay that it's got one hydrogen or even two hydrogens. That's okay, or no hydrogens. I mean, because that's possible, because it could have a lone pair. So just remember that, okay? A mean is one nitrogen staking a claim saying it's all mine, because this nitrogen does not have to share that carbon chain. Now, check out a mid, you know. A mid has to admit, a mid has to admit that it's sharing its carbon chain with an oxygen here. Now notice that it is sharing this carbon chain that's over here with nitrogen. This nitrogen is sharing it with this oxygen. So it has to admit to sharing something. This nitrogen does. Admit, amine, uh, is mine. One nitrogen is taking a claim. Amid has to admit that it's sharing its carbon and, and carbon chains with an O. Okay. Anyway, uh, an aldehyde. Ah, uh, there's honestly not an easy way to remember an aldehyde. I just think of an aldehyde as being a <laughs> basically a rejected carboxylic acid. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Notice that on an aldehyde and on a carboxylic acid, they both they both have the double bonded O. But notice that an aldehyde uh, only has the ox, uh, excuse me, only has the hydrogen. Now, the way that I always remember that was uh, it has a hide. It has only a hydrogen, a hide. You know, it's it's hide. If you also want to think of hide here, uh, meaning to hide that oxygen, I guess that's okay. I'm just teaching you a way of remembering these. Okay, so aldehyde is basically a double bonded O and an H. Now, carboxylic acid again is basically notice you've got the double bonded O but it also has this hydroxyl group with it okay so you always look at the central atom and look for your carbon chains when you're trying to help identify some of these now look at the ketone now the way that I remember ketone ketone uh, sounds like the word key it almost sounds the same you know and if you look at this maybe you could envision this being a keyhole on the ketone Okay, but notice that both to the left and to the right, you have a carbon chain, some type of carbon chain. Okay, if it, even if it's just one carbon, still a carbon chain. Now we already went over carboxylic acid, and we went over about aldehyde being a, you know, basically you know a, sh a shunned or a, you know or a beat up carboxylic acid because it's missing an O. Um, anyway, uh, the other one we went over ester. Uh, uh, kind, uh, so I, I can't remember how to pronounce this one, the uh, like cyanide, so cyano. The way that I remember it is this just got cyanide on it. Okay, it's not, I, I don't see that that often, but maybe some of you will in organic chemistry. But this is awesome to go over, that someone's actually explained this to you because it's always helpful to have some gimmick of remembering these functional groups, and that's what I'm trying to, to do with you here. Okay, just go over uh, a way, helpful way to memorize and to learn your functional groups. They have chloro, you know, basically you can tell that's chlorine. You know, if they ever give you something like a bromo, then I guess you know that's a bromine. Okay, don't worry about it. Anyway, a phosphate, I guess it's kind of obvious. It's going to look really weird, okay? You're basically going to have a phosphorus that's going to be surrounded by oxygens. Okay, notice you're going to focus on that. It's got four oxygens surrounding the phos. Fate, okay, like kind of like the phosphorus here, is already its fate has been sealed in by four O's. <laughs> We're out to get you, okay. But anyway, that's the way that I uh, bothered to teach myself to memorize these. That way, I could actually keep them in my head, and it has helped over the years. Uh, this video is kind of went kind of long, so since I've broken down a helpful way of remembering your functional groups, maybe now uh, in the next video we'll actually go over uh, how to locate them and also which ones are going to be soluble in water and which ones are not. You know. So anyway, next time, guys. So check out the other videos, and we'll actually show you how to identify. Them. All right. Hope it helps.